Conference. It's more O days to talk about. We got WordPad, HTTP2 hitting the industry, and Skype for Business. What? This just in Skype for Business is still a thing. Let's talk about it in the patch report. Hello, everyone. I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro ZDI and our Chief Patch Wrangler. We have a lot to talk about. Over 113 different CVEs released today. Let's get straight to it. Let's start with Adobe. Three patches, 13 CVEs total. Not a big release. The biggest one is in commerce, 10 there, and that's really about it. Uh, there is one for Photoshop that you should take care of, but kind of a boring month from Adobe, so good on them. Moving on to Microsoft, we have 103 new CVEs released today, and that is a lot. Two of them are under active attack. We'll talk about the third here in a minute. Usual su suspects as far as components affected. First one is WordPad as far as the zero days go. This is an NTLM relay. So again, we're passing the hash with this stuff. Make sure that you check out the link to the blog there for the Windows 11 update that allows you to turn off NTLM over SMB it will shut down a lot of these types of attacks. The other one is Skype for Business. And yes, Skype for Business is still a thing that is used by people in the real world. Don't judge them, okay? Uh, and it is being exploited. And this exploit has been talked about for over a year online, and now it's being taken care of. Check out the uh, link to the blog in the description below to give you some additional details on this SF, excuse me, the SSRF, which is, you know, always something to say. Message queuing is a big deal this month. We've got 20 something updates just for message queuing, including the CVSS 9.8, which is wormable between systems with message queuing enabled. The good news is it's not enabled by default. The bad news is a lot of things turn it on. So go check TCP port uh, 1801 is the standard. Make sure that that's blocked at your perimeter. Make sure you're patched. And if you can disable it, well, then consider disabling message queuing if you don't need it. The final one I really want to call out this month is in IIS. And yeah, people still use that too, and you shouldn't judge them either. And this is an elevation of privilege vulnerability. Microsoft says it's important, even though it's a CVSS 9.8. I say treat it as critical if you're running IIS. They knock it down because it requires a brute force attack. But come on, we can do brute forces easily these days, and I don't think that's much of a barrier for entry. So definitely treat it as critical if you're running IIS. You take a look at the table at your leisure. Uh, the other O'Day I want to mention is HTTP2, because this has been used since August in denial of service attacks against AWS and Google, amongst others. There's now a patch for it. It is an industry-wide problem, actually. Microsoft had to release their patch for it as well. There's two links in the blog, one to Google to talk about the bug itself. Uh, it gives a very good technical description of the exploit. The other one's Microsoft's blog and how they're dealing with it. Uh, I've already talked about all of the message queuing bugs, but there are more of them. Okay, all right. There's another exchange bug, another exchange patch. Last month I said there was an exchange patch, but I was wrong. There were actually exchange bugs being documented from the August patch that were silently patched in August and then documented in September. This is actually a patch and it has one CVE that we know of. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Godspeed, Exchange Admins. Moving on to other critical patches, there are nine for the L2 tunneling protocol if you're still running RAS. Uh, so definitely take a look at those. The other ones are not as exciting when it comes to RCE. Uh, MS HTML and print HTML a little bit just because those things still exist. We don't always think they do. Bunch of EOP bugs, but nothing super exciting. Um, there is something uh, for Azure HD Insight Apache Uzi Workflow Scheduler. Okay, it's 2023. Can we stop calling things Uzi? I don't know who named that, but you need to fire your marketing department and ooze along to something else. All right. Um, there is an interesting one in the Azure Network Washer where you could like change some packet captures. That's kind of cool. Uh, just a few security feature bypasses this month, primarily talking about Mark of the Web as usual. You know, Still doing that. Uh, info disclosure bugs, most of them are just dumping random memory. Couple cool exceptions to that. First, one is in the Windows kernel. And normally if I see info disclosure in the kernel, 
I'm thinking heat memory, just random memory of something. Uh, this is actually giving you some sensitive information such as resource IDs, SAS tokens, user properties, other things right out of the kernel. So that's a cool info disclosure bug. The other one is in TCP IP, which would allow an attacker to see unencrypted contents of IPsec packets. That's kind of cool too. So definitely check out those bugs and make sure you patch them. A uh, bunch of DOS bugs, but nothing super exciting other than the DOS is in TCP IP and DHCP. Those could make you have a bad day if you get hit with those, I suppose, but that's about it. And that pretty much wraps up the month. A lot of stuff to do this month, a couple of days. Hopefully we'll see in November that trend calm down as the weather gets cooler here, at least in the Northern hemisphere. And yes, for you Eagle Eye viewers, I am not in the Mid-South headquarters. I am actually in our Dallas headquarters in front of an actual living wall and not just a green screen too. So that's neat. I will return from the Mid-South headquarters next month, November 14th for our updates then. Until then, good luck, Godspeed, and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.